You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent: Ray's Path. So the last place we left off, yeah, it was kind of a uh, sexy episode. Well, all the all the episodes with Ray are all are especially sexy, but uh, I, we, we made some puns and. <laughs> yeah, I love it. But yeah, guys, let's jump right back in. Uh, please sit back and enjoy and maintain you for the next 18 minutes, and let's jump right in. Knock it off, you silly little cat. I, we can all hear you meow and you silly little thing. All right, there we go. All right, guys, let's do it. You mean Ratos Intolerant. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> you walked around a bit, browsing the stands with rain until the sun rose higher. At first it was warm, but soon enough the amount of people made the atmosphere all the more hot and sweatier. Ray eventually noticed you getting exhausted from the walking. You okay there, love? Let's sit down a bit there, okay? Sh sure, thanks, hon. You both sit down at a table. The shade made the heat quite bearable for now. Wait here a bit. I'll get something for us to cool off. Alright, don't take too long. It's starting to melt here. Ray went to a familiar booth nearby. Huh, I think I've seen them before. After a few minutes, he brought back two cones of ice cream. Here you go, he said, handing you one. Oh, thank the heavens. Uh, thank you, ever invented ice cream. It took quite a bite off the ice cream. The cold seeped into your mouth, then your head. Ah! You winced as your head throbbed. Brain freeze! Ah! Whoa there, take it slow, Cassian. Just lick it slowly. <clears throat> it's okay. I'm okay now. Just don't just bite into it like that. What are you, a monster? Uh, by my old world standard, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> you really are from another world, huh? Yeah. Do you have festivals like this there? Of course, it's actually pretty similar so far. Uh, minus the floating wagon thingy. I see. Say, Cassian, do you miss your world? Oh, well... It's okay if you don't want to talk about it. It's okay. Well, I have a close friend that I left behind there. His name is, um... I can't seem to remember. Uh, but we shared the same interests and used to talk about it all the time. Uh, but if I'm to be honest, I'm more worried than sad. This used to be our dream, to be in, well, this. Being in this? Yeah, it's hard to explain. Uh, other than that, I don't really miss much else, I guess. Uh, there's also my old caretaker, but I've been living away from him for some time, so I guess I'm used to not seeing him around. Uh, but hey, at least I don't have to do math equations and all that schoolwork again. Well, if you needed someone to talk about matters that bothered you, I'm always here. <laughs> I will. It's alright, hon. How are you feeling? Any better yet? Yeah, the ice cream actually helped. I kind of don't mind a few more, actually. Heh, <laughs> same. Let's get some more, then continue sightseeing, alright? Sure thing. <laughs> Cuties. You got some more ice cream with Ray before going around the carnival again. You got into some attractions with him and tried some snacks along the way. They were quite filling, but somehow you still felt quite hungry as you went on. The sun was already high up in the sky when you lined up for the mirror maze. It looked interesting, and Ray seemed quite excited about it. Oop, what do we got? Ooh, listen to that tummy. Oh? You're already hungry, Cassian? Yeah, I, I guess so. Ah, well, let's get back out of here. Let's get... Let's back out of the queue for now. <laughs> okay, sorry, Ray. Nah, it's all right. Oh, one second, guys. Oh, one. Don't leave. Don't leave. One second. Team trailers. Okay. All righty. Nah, it's all right. I'm actually quite hungry too. We can play this tomorrow. Let's grab some food for now. You both started looking around for a food stall that interested you when a familiar voice called out. Sir Rai? You saw Snow Leopard waving his hand from a booth. Ah, okay. You both slowly walked toward the booth, despite Ray seemingly quite reluctant for a moment. The place was already packed. Looks like Cody's food is quite in demand today. The leopard signaled you both to circle around the back so you could both so you could meet up with him back there. It's been a while since I saw you, sir. Yeah, it's been a while. How's Cody? Well, why don't you ask him yourself? Hmm. He opened the back door and you could see Cody cooking a fresh batch of food while talking to the customer. Ash, where are you? I need you to help me out with... Oh, Rye? 
I'll take over for you there, sir. No worries. You can relax for a bit. I'll make some lunch for you both, too. Ashford headed in and took over and took over for Cody, who backed out with a rather, rather nervous look on his face. Um, hey, uh, Cody. H hi. So, yeah, how's business? It went well, I guess. Um, how about you? Same, uh, so, how are you? Good, good. I'm doing fine currently. How about you? Seeing other people yet? Yeah, well, I'm seeing a lot of people, actually. Uh... Well, I'm actually with Cassian now. That was before I met you. Don't worry, Cassian. Oh yeah, have you both met? This is Cassian. He's the one, the one, the one Max brought in, right? Yeah, we've met. It's nice to see you again, Cassian. Likewise, Cody. It's been a while. Yeah, it is. You all stood around in silence for a bit. The awkwardness is so thick in the air, you could probably slice it with a knife. Suddenly, Ash opened the door again and gave you and Ray each a box of food. Here you go. Don't worry about payment. It's on the house from us. Uh, oh, right. Thanks, Ash. No problem. I should head back inside. I think I had enough to rest. So, see you around, Cassian. Rye. Uh, sure. Uh, Cody? Yeah? It's nice seeing you again. Same here. See you, Cody. Ash, thanks for the food! With that, you bid them farewell. Ray brought you to the arena to watch the tournament while enjoying your lunch. You see, he made it in time just for the opening ceremony, which was quite spectacular to say the least. The fighters paraded inside the arena, each being introduced by the announcer as they walked. As they walked, you could see Max and Finn alongside them. Max seemed to notice you as he waved towards you. He promptly returned the gesture. You could hear someone shouting his name loudly not far from you. A tiger seemed to be cheering his heart out for Max, clearly trying to get his attention. Jeez, he never gives up, huh? Who? Him? <laughs> Toby. Yeah, Tobias. Max's friend and junior from back at the academy. Even though he's not on our team, he always stops by to catch up and chat with Max, sometimes asking for advice and exercise routine plans. Oh, well, maybe he admired him? Probably. And probably something more. He still goes to Max for advice from time to time, even when Max is no longer his mentor. That's more than just admiration to me, but, eh, what do I know? But, right. Oh, but don't forget about Alex's appointment, Ray. Don't want to piss him off again. Yeah, I know. We still got time. I want to see Max beating Finn first. He sat there with Ray for a bit, watching the tournament. Sorry, guys. Um, forgot to mute it. Max and Finn performed more than well, more than well as they both got to face each other on, both got to face each other off in the semifinal. Yeah, kick his ass, Max. You got this. Ray shouted at the top of his lungs. What voice did I do for Finn? I got, I got so many voices I'm juggling in my fucking head. Hey, hey. Why don't you come and kick my ass directly, huh? Ha ha ha! Finn smirked and shouted back. The bell rang as their match commenced. It seemed like a close fight, but you couldn't tell who was really having the upper hand. The fight went on for a while, and you were at the, and you were at the edge of your seat wondering who would come out on top. But before the match concluded, Ray decided it was time to go to Alex. You both made your way to Alex's lab. Hmm. Ray scanned his eyes to unlock the doors you headed in. Hey, Alex. Oh! You saw Alex sleeping with his head on the table. It looked like he was working on something and fell asleep at some point. Festin is there, though, still sorting through some documents and files. Oh, uh, hello, Sir Bright. <laughs> uh, Master Alex is asleep right now. What may Festin help you with? I'm good, Festin. What is he making this time? Uh, some sort of a, a communication device. Yesterday, Master Alex borrows some kind of device from Circassian here. Festin and Master Alex tinker with such device all night long. Huh, <laughs> figures. Ray went by Alex's side and rubbed his head. I guess we should let him rest then, yeah? Are you sure it's okay? What if he gets angry when he doesn't see you here? It's fine. Festin can pass the message on for us. There's no need for that now. <sighs> Man, that actually made me on. Yeah, now you did too. Alex slowly started awake from his sleep. I'm awake the moment he touched my head. Should have told me sooner that you needed my touch, Alex. Yeah. No, I don't need your touch. Get your darn hand off of me. Ray moved away a bit as he chuckled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can totally see it in like the head rubs, Mr. Blushy Face. <laughs> well now, you finally show up on time. Hey, I'm sorry, alright? I really am. But now that I'm here, anything I can do for you? 
Just uh, sit there and um, keep me company. I do need someone that doesn't talk in third person to talk to. Huh? Uh, nothing. Uh, can you fetch us some coffee, Festin? Uh, sure thing, Master. Festin quickly left the lab. So, Festin said you're making a communication device. Yeah, I'm taking inspiration from the same device Cassian brought yesterday. It's so small yet intricate, unlike our tech now, most of which are sprawling in comparison. Really? Let me see for a bit. Hmm. Alex sifted through the stuff on his desk and held up a diagram of the phone in the phone's internal circuitry. Huh. Fascinating. I know, right? They apparently store the electricity intake, then use it to convert and amplify signals, store and display data, all from the small board. I'll have to try to work to downscale the tech we currently have to make this work. It still barely passes conceptual check, but I'll figure something out. Yeah, our recurrent model takes up too much space. We can only have several bits of it across the continent. Yes, so if I can make this work, you can finally become a world-renowned scientist. Yep. The door slid open as Festin brought in three cups of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Is he on? What is he on? Is he on like a little hover a little hover podium or a pedestal? You probably thanked him as he handed you a cup, though you immediately gagged a bit, a bit the moment the coffee touched your tongue. It's so sweet, almost like drinking pure sugar in black liquid form. Bah! Should have warned you first, huh? Really? Now, if you don't like it, I can finish it for you. Please do. He put the coffee on his desk. Ray, on the other hand, sipped his coffee normally. How could you um do that? Do what? This? Festin already knew my preferences, so he only put one eighteenth of what he puts for Alex. What? That's cheating! This Sir Cassian wants his next coffee to be the same as Sarai. Yes, please. All right, Festin will take note of that. You both stayed for quite some time with Alex, chatting and discussing random things before it got late. You and Ray said your goodbyes and headed upstairs to the lobby. Well, Cassian, did you have fun today, love? Yeah, I did. Thanks, Ray. Hmm. Do you want to do you want the fun to continue? Uh, well, what do you mean by that? You know what I meant, Cassian. Do you want this to continue? Do you want to continue this at your place? Well, I. What was that noise? You both ran outside and looked at the sky. Oh shit. Hmm. Uh oh. A loud cracking noise followed by a fizzle echoed across the horizon. The night sky seemed to glow and shimmer, but as the gentle hum from the barrier became louder and louder, a small yet visible terror formed upon the sky. You shuddered as a loud thud followed the crackling in the sky. You held tightly onto Ray's hand. W wait, what is that? Oh, Lord. All of a sudden, you could see Max bolting from the stadium towards the direction of the Guardian Crystal. Shit! You stay here, okay? Find Finn and get back to the main building. W wait, why? What's going on, Ray? I don't know, but things might get dangerous. You gotta head over there myself. Ray, what the hell just happened? You saw Finn coming out from the stadium as well. Oh, good timing, Finn. Do me a favor and hold on to Cassian for me. Yeah, sure, but what are you going to do? I'm gonna follow Max, make sure he doesn't kill himself. Keep Cassian safe, alright? Wait, R Ray! You screamed from the top of your lungs even louder than the, bl the thundering sounds above your head, but Ray had already disappeared to the darkness. Panic arose as people began to pack their things and aimlessly ran for their lives. Several mercenaries on the scene were already trying to keep the masses calm while guiding them into the guild building. <sighs> Come, Cassian. Let's head inside. It's dangerous here. What should I do? I can't just let him go like this. F Finn, we need to help Ray. Are you sure that's a good idea? You might get yourself killed. But, but he might get hurt. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> huh. Look, if you're in trouble, Ray's gonna bash my head in. So I'm coming with you, alright? I don't want that idiot getting into harm's way, too. Th thanks, Finn. Let's go, then. Zoop! You both gradually waded through the sea of people, though at some point during the chaos, you lost sight of Finn as he charged ahead of you. By the time the crowd subsided, you couldn't find him anywhere. Eventually, you made your way to the park alone. You took a turn into the nearby alleyway to cut across the town cut across the town for a different path, for a direct path, but the further you headed in, the darker it got, and somehow you felt like you shouldn't have come here. Splurt, squish, squish, glorp. help You were turning back, but as the town fell silent, there was a strange noise close by. You took a peek around the corner. 
The alleyway was nearly pitch black by then. The only thing you could make out under the dim moonlight was a rather big figure towering over someone else. Maybe that other person was getting robbed. You could stop and help them, but you could have a bit, you had a bad feeling about this. You really should turn back and find another way to help to reach Ray. As you stepped away, the ground shook as the fissure upon the sky turned into a rift. The sky flashed and shimmered, illuminating the entire alleyway for the moment. Ugh. Ugh, God, that's fucking creepy as fuck. I can't feel my face. Help! The ill-fated person whimpered as caustic goo enveloped their entire body. Their eyeball fell out of their half-molten skull. What's left of their face twisted and contorted from fear and utter pain. What in the world? You couldn't bear to watch any longer. The stench was so unbearable you could throw up any moment. A loud splat made you tremble as you realized whatever that thing was had eyes, and it was watching you very intently from the start. All you could see amidst the darkness was a large, sinister smile. God, that's fucking terrifying. Oh, God. Yeah, creepy fucking creature. Ooh, what have we here? You can feel the figure's lifeless eyes staring into your soul. The creature slowly shuffled towards you as you scrambled around, looking for any sort of weapon to defend yourself. But back, back off! Help! You tried to call out for your help, but your voice haplessly drowned out in the clamor. Lord's creepy ass monster. Yeesh. The crowd fled towards the main to the guild's main building, or worse still, you witnessed the poor victim dissolve within the creature, their skin and flesh stripped from the bone, leaving naught behind but their faintly beating heart. He's still alive? What kind of monster is this? Not enough. Need more. Oh stop. Shit! I had better do something. I have to tell Ray about this. Before you could lift your feet, tentacles of goo lurched towards you. What? Ah! The tentacles wrapped around your forearm and ankles, struggling against its pull. Your feet began to skid across the ground as you got dragged towards its body. You trembled as its slimy body began to envelop you, caressing your back and chest. It began to pull you deeper into itself. Several tendrils slipped off under your clothes, slowly pulling it apart. No! Ugh. Resist. H help! Ray! Help! You struggled as you tried to pry yourself free from the slime, despite your efforts to continue to pull you further in. <laughs> Several goo tentacles forced their way into your mouth and started pumping liquid slime down your throat. You gargled goo as you desperately cried, trying to claw your way out, the gelatinous body already working its way up your back to the base of your neck. Hmm. It wasn't long before your entire body was submerged, leaving only your head exposed before that too began to be pulled down. Cassian! Wait. Cassian! A ball of fire whooshed by towards the creature and exploded on impact, melting half of its body off. <sighs> you slipped from the creature's weakened grasp. Ray deftly swooped in and snatched you away, pulling you slightly behind him. Are you okay? Did it, did it hurt you? I'm okay, Ray, thanks. This is bad. Another creature so close to the Guardian Crystal? How did it even break in? All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right there. The next part will be a big fight scene, and this time we've got Ray helping us. I can't wait to see what kind of attacks he can bring to he can bring to the fore against this thing. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!